absolutely love it and I, I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else now and you know whereas other places that I've worked I've always kind of thought oh well what if I was here you know oh, I might apply for that whereas now I feel like I'm, I'm at home like that's I, fantastic yeah I open my toolbox every morning and it's just like yeah this it feels like you know you're where you belong yeah my home from home that's great <laughs> And yeah. I mean, Gabrielli, it's great, great that you can join us from the NFDA. But I mean, these are fantastic stories, aren't they, of, of, of how two young people have got into automotive and, and really backs up exactly what what you guys are trying to work to achieve. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm here in in a sort of drive my career capacity. Drive my career is the initiative that was launched by the NFDA to help our members like JST600 to attract and retain talented young people to the sector. Indeed, just reiterating what you've been saying, um, the, the main issue that Drive My Career has been trying to tackle is the lack of awareness around the opportunities in automotive. So we have two big missions, if you want, uh, a Drive My Career. Uh, the main one, the long-term goal, is about raising awareness of career opportunities in the automotive industry and really highlighting the positive aspects of working in automotive. Uh, so all these incredibly inspiring stories are, are perfect for Drive My Career, and this is the sort of testimonials that we want to to use to inspire more young people outside our sector. Welcome to this, our latest edition of the AM News Show podcast. Today, we're joined by Gabriele Severini, Communications Manager at the National Franchise Dealers Association, Nicola tordoff Sohn from JCT600, who's their Colleague Experience Director, and... Sophie Bailey and Ben Collinson, who are both apprentices with the AM100 dealer group. It's great to, to have you along and, and sort of have apprentices on hand to talk as we talk around some of the issues with, with recruitment and, and really encouraging the next generation of talent into the sector, which is, is a huge concern for a lot of employers at the moment. Um, with, the, with the shortages that we're, we're, we're both, you know, we're all seeing in the sector. Um, so... I mean, I'll, I'll kick off with uh, with a question to you, Nicola. Really, I guess you know how how invaluable are apprentices to, to JCT as as you look to expand your workforce and bring new people, not just into the into the business, but I guess into the sector as well. Yeah, well, absolutely, um, absolutely invaluable to us um, as a business. You know, bringing new talent through. Um, through the pipeline, not only, uh, you know, um, to uh, for the start of their career, but, you know, thinking about what our aims and ambitions are um, for the future. You know, one, one thing that's on our agenda, quite high on our agenda at the moment, is um, gender balance um, and diversity. And that starts with who we're bringing in and the young people we're attracting into this business to make sure we're getting them started and then getting them on the right path um, to have hopefully you know a, a fulfilling career with us yeah absolutely and and you know how about the 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 process of bringing apprentices in where where are you advertising how are you trying to encourage that diversity and you know how how much of an intake do you tend to have on on a yearly basis um so that's changed recently as has everything else with you know the pandemic um we pre pandemic we were running at around about 100 um apprentices across um across the group um we're at about 80 now with um we're looking for uh, another 20 um, so hopefully those we, we're going to see those numbers start to uh, get back to level off and get back to um, our standard uh, 100 um, again. Um, we we don't actually find it that difficult to attract apprentices into our business. And so, you know, we don't do anything out of the ordinary there. The usual um, recruitment um, channels, job boards. Um, a lot of uh, word of mouth. You know, we uh, we know a lot of our apprentices already. Um, ben, who I will speak to in a little while, I guess, was um, came to us through work experience, and, and then we got back in touch to say, would you be interested in an apprenticeship with us? So, um, you know, building relate, have, uh, working on our, our own network, our relationships with uh, existing colleagues. 
um, really helps us attract the right uh, talent into the business through apprenticeships too. Is it, is it a big job to attract people into the business? Are you, are you overwhelmed by applications? Are they appropriate applications? Um, we get quite a significant number of applications uh, for um, our apprenticeship scheme. Um, I wouldn't say we're overwhelmed, but we can, uh, we can be selective. Uh, which is a good position to be in. Um, and our um, uh, yeah, apprenticeship scheme has has been um, successful, you know, in the past uh, few years. And I think I think that in itself helps us to attract um, a good amount of candidates um, into the business. Um, and it means that we don't have to do anything really out out of the ordinary, you know, I think, Focusing on um, uh, colleague experience, you know, that uh, colleague journey, well-being, really looking after our apprentices, making sure we have, um, we're creating that stimulating but supportive learning environment um, really has been the most uh, important thing for us. And I think if you get those basics right, the rest follows. We do tend to retain a high number um, of our apprentices uh, year on year, on year. Uh, and that's something we're really proud of. Um, and I think it does come back to um, hitting all those right markers, you know, create, making sure apprentices have got their uh, mentor in place, making sure that uh, relationship is works both ways, you know, matching people um, in that way. Um, uh, like I say, getting the well-being right, you know, for a lot of our um, apprentices, it's it can be their first foray into um, not only the industry, but any job. And um, I think really being mindful of that and making sure we are creating that supportive environment is um, is really paramount to us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want to leave Sophie and Ben sat there with, with nothing to <laughs> chat about. So we've got, it's great to have two, you know, two young people at the start of the career uh, in in the studio with us today, so I, I gather you you guys have both got quite interesting stories about how you came to take on apprenticeships with uh, with with JCT six hundred. I, I mean, we, we've we've heard a little bit about yours, Ben. You you had a hands on experience with work, you know, yes. working in a in a dealership before you took on your apprenticeship. So how, how did that pan out? So um, I was contacted by. Uh, well, the dealership was con- t- contacted the school because it was a, a roundabout sort of year turn time when I was around about sort of 15, pushing on 16, where we actually do work experience. I was struggling myself in what I wanted to do at that at that particular time. So I was I took it hands on. Um, I went down to the dealership. Everyone was really welcoming. Uh, and I ended up, I only did, I originally wanted to do the first week because it was a one out of two week, one out of two weeks, sorry. And asked if I could do the second week, which were there, they were happy to do. I enjoyed every second of it. And then later on, in around about, I want to say, February 2020, before everything with uh, the pandemic really kicked off, I managed to squeeze an extra week of work experience in, which I did out of my own accord, which they were happy and, you know, really welcomed me back into the dealership and really acknowledged the fact that I took my own time out of, it was pretty much a holiday to invest myself into the career. Uh, and then shortly after, obviously everything happened with the pandemic. I was uh, contacted by my school that had left and said, "JCT have rang me up. They really want you to push this apprenticeship. They think you're really going to do really well." And from that moment when I applied, everything's been handled so well. Uh, you know, I've always been updated with what's happening. I've never been kept out of the loop. Uh, every conversation I've had with it, whether it be HR or Dale, has been really well gone through. And then when I actually got the job. I was surprised. I was obviously really happy about it, but at the same at the same time, I sort of already felt like I already had it because of the the work I'd put in before. But it it does really pay off. Um, and so yeah, it was really really nice, and everyone was really kind to me. I was really happy. I mean, uh, uh, huge points to JCT that they're involved with schools, and that it mm-hmm. was that approach that sort of got you in for work experience. Had you, had you already thought in your mind that you might like to go into automotive at that stage? Because I mean, myself, I never I've still haven't got a career plan I'll be honest and if someone had come to me <laughs> given me work experience and then told me you're great at this come mm. and join us I would have been there I would have I would have done the same as you and and you know and gone after it so were you 
Were you thinking about automotive as a career path? I've always wanted to be into the motor industry. I've always had an interest in cars ever since I was obviously no taller than I am now. Mm. Uh, but I've always been interested in cars. I've always wanted to to be involved with it, no matter if it was actually you know on the workshop floor, whether it was looking after the customers. I'd always wanted to have some involvement with it and. I naturally like admin work as much as some people don't like to admit it. I love doing all the admin work. So as soon as I had the opportunity to, I 100% um, went with it. And you, your pals who went off and worked at the local convenience store and then came <laughs> staggering back into school, happy to resume the studies after two weeks. How do they feel now that you're working on the job and, and you know, you've, you've got a bit of a career path mapped out for you? I feel like, um, obviously, because they're... They're at the age where, and so am I, where anything could happen. Obviously, anything could, life could throw itself at anyone. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help them. So, obviously, because I know we've got a few apprentice, a few apprenticeship, apprenticeships available at the moment, I'm trying to sort of help my friends and say, look, the motor industry and JCT is a prime place to be for apprentices because you're well looked after, you're supported with mentors, and you're supported with staff around because they're all very helpful encourage them to say look i think this is something you should you should do as well um but obviously they've uh, they've not got back to me on that one yet so. <laughs> had, i'm interested to know whether had, had school spoken to you about the automotive sector because when when i was going into careers meetings mm-hmm. it was uh, literally you can be a teacher you can be a policeman you can be a journalist god forbid someone <laughs> might have mentioned journalism um but the, you know the, there really wasn't the scope of career options laid out in front of you. And it's only when you perhaps get into your 20s, 30s, and you're in a career and you start looking around thinking, what else could could I have actually done with myself that you realise, you know, the breadth of opportunity in automotive offers all those things in one in one sector. W- were you aware of, of what could be offered? I was aware, but only in sort of little bits. It was, um, I consulted, because we have a... We have like a careers manager at my at my old school who obviously looked out for these different things. You know what what can students do in the future? I reached out to her and said, "Look, I want to be into the motor industry. Into the motor industry. These are the things that I like doing. What would be tailored for me?" And she sat down and you know we went through everything, went through all the different positions and what I would tailor, what I would tailor to. And we saw service advisory. It, it checked all the boxes. To be honest, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. You know, there's, like I say, there's plenty of variety in the sector, which, you know, it needs to be explored and it needs to be put into in front of young people. Um, and I think it's, sorry, I think it's also not only about the job role with young people now. I think part of um, what businesses need to do is to be um, attractive to young people, to understand what is important to young people, which I think has changed. You know, you're talking about when perhaps you and I were sat at school talking to their careers advisor. I think it is different now. And I do feel like young people have a better understanding of um, what's important to them and what they really value. And what's coming back out of that is, you know, to value more uh, meaningful work experiences, um, um, work-life balance. It's not all about, um, you know, career progression, finance, salary. There's, There's far more... Um, to think about, I think, these days with attracting uh, young people into the business and understanding um, what their values are and how we can um, uh, match those values. And and, we've we've done a lot of work um, uh, with that over the last um, couple of years, starting before lockdown with you know, introducing um, smart working practices, um, you know, to really cater for those who want to um, balance their own time and work when it it suits them for certain roles. Um, Increasing our um, holiday entitlement, that's what we announced um, just very recently. We've really enhanced that holiday entitlement, understanding that annual leave and that work-life balance is something that's really important um, to, well, to everybody, but particularly young people right now maternity paternity you know all these things contribute to the overall um experience um of work and and uh, you know work-life balance is is something i want i wanted to address with sophie actually because it seems like (laughs) sophie's work-life balance is more like a a work work balance (laughs) Um, or or life life balance (laughs) or life life balance (laughs) quite right the one and the same is what i'm trying to say um so uh, sophie you sort of You've come into the sector from a, a, a slightly different route 
to Ben, is that right? You, you, you're you already very much hands-on <laughs> before you started with JCT, weren't you? Yeah. Um, well, to kind of take it back in time a little bit, the first job I ever wanted to do when I was like this big was become a mechanic. Like that was the first job I ever wanted to do. But I kind of got um, pushed out of it a little bit, you know, kind of like discouraged from it. Um, no, you won't, you won't want to do that. You really won't like it, that kind of thing. Who was that? Uh, just a family member that Name was a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> just a family okay. member that was a mechanic and they absolutely hated it. And it put me off. So I'm a bit older than Ben, so I'm 23 now. Um, I've kind of spent like the last few years, um, n- not job hopping, but, you know, trying to find my place almost. Um, but a few years ago, I started um, like an online account because I'm a well-seasoned Land Rover nut is what I am. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I started um, an online account purely um, as like a personal thing, like a personal blog for me. Um, and, you know, if people wanted to watch and follow along, then they could. Um, so I started doing that, you know, getting quite hands on um, mechanically, like restoring old Land Rovers because, uh, you know, I've grown up with four by fours in the family and it's just naturally what I've kind of gravitated to with my lifestyle and what I'm interested in. So they quite nicely align up with everything that I'm kind of passionate about. So a few years into doing that kind of thing, um, I've been doing that for two years now, so about a year into it, um, I decided do you know what, I need to find my place and I think, you know, I'm just going to jump hands in and try and go into the automotive industry because something that kind of put me off before was um, not maybe not fitting in, you know, with like being a girl, to be honest with you. I thought I were going to get a bit of a hard time um, because when I first started like um, my YouTube channel, that's what I do in my spare time with Land Rovers, um, I kind of got quite a bit of stick for it when I first started with being right. a girl. Um, and I still do, but, you know, it's kind of levelled out now. So it sort of put me off. But then I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Like, why wouldn't you? So I saw a job come up for JCT, Aston Martin, as um, an apprentice um, parts advisor. So I thought, right, this will be my step in the door, you know, and then, you know, see where it takes me. Let's just uh, follow the path. But my now manager, he rang me up like um, a few days after, I think it was, and said, um, look, you know, as as much as you might be good for that role, we really want you in the workshop after finding my channel and things like that. You know, would you be interested in a position, you know, if we can open one up for you? So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, let, let's just see how it goes. Like, sure. Because um, I'm not a reserved person. That's probably not like, um, but I've, I I kind of got a bit of stick before and I was sort of umming and ahhing, but I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Let's let's just see where it takes me. So, yeah, I, um, I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I got the job and uh, I'm here a year later. So, and you are you're been... at you're at Aston Martin Leeds, is that right? Yes. Slightly <laughs> different to uh, the Land Rovers you work on, I guess. But I really like them, and they've got such a good following because of how like quirky they are, and you know, it kind of fits in with the Land Rovers a little bit because uh, they're not that dissimilar. So, I'm in, I'm interested to know what this family member now says or thinks about about you <laughs> taking got the on last laugh. <laughs> we don't talk <laughs> really so, yeah i mean that, you know it's such it's a, it's such a a sad story in a way it's great that you have yeah. arrived where you are but someone clearly with such a passion mm. for for automotive for working on cars to think at any point in your development that that's not the career path that was right for you is is staggering, and particularly yeah. when part of that is just because you you're female and you, you you're intimidated about the environment. Yeah, it's um, been a bit of a rocky road for me to try and build up my um, confidence with it. But to be honest with you, from day one of being in that workshop, I've I felt like I was at home. Like I've never been treated any differently. Like if anything, like it's quite nice because like the fellas, you know, they'll lift the heavy batteries and stuff for me. So I kind of you know <laughs> get out of it a little bit in a way. So there's there's always um a flip side to the coin but no i i absolutely love it and i I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else now and you know whereas other places that i've worked i've always kind of thought oh well what if i was here you know oh i might apply for that whereas now i feel like i'm i'm at home like that's fantastic yeah i open my toolbox every morning it's just like yeah this it feels like you know you're where you belong yeah my home from home that's great (laughs) And yeah. I mean, Gabrielli, it's great, great that you can join us from the NFDA. But I mean, these are fantastic stories, aren't they, of, of, of how two young people have got into automotive and, and really backs up exactly what what you guys are trying to work to achieve. 
Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I'm here in in a sort of drive my career capacity. Drive my career is the initiative that was launched by the NFDA to help our members like JST600 to attract and retain talented young people to the sector. Indeed, just reiterating what you've been saying, um, the, the main issue that Drive My Career has been trying to tackle is the lack of awareness around the opportunities in automotive. So we have two big missions, if you want, uh, a Drive My Career. Uh, the main one, the long-term goal, is about raising awareness of career opportunities in the automotive industry, and really highlighting the positive aspects of working in automotive. Uh, so all these incredibly inspiring stories are, are perfect for Drive My Career, and this is the sort of testimonials that we want to to use to inspire more young people outside our sector. Uh, and secondly, what we do um, really on a, on a daily basis is trying to practically um, use social media channels primarily to redirect via the Drama Career website as many uh, primarily young people as possible to our members' career pages to encourage more applicants. It's great to know that JST600 um, is not really struggling for applicants at the moment, but that may not be the case for uh, for other data groups, depending on locations, depending on perhaps the brand that they represent. Um, but again, what we found out is that when young people especially are made aware of the opportunities available in the automotive industry, of um, all the perks and benefits and exciting aspects of working in our sector, uh, they're much more positive about starting a career in automotive. Um, so we do uh, stress through our campaigns a number of different uh, messages, including the variety of jobs available. Uh, it's interesting because we always say it's not just uh, either selling or fixing cars, there's much more that you can do in automotive. Uh, but actually, we've recently done a survey and um, sales and, uh, and technician roles are the most popular also among uh, the younger generation. Um, but on top of that, we stress that uh, the sector has come such a long way uh, really overcoming a lot of the misconceptions that to some extent are, are still atta still attached to the automotive sector uh, and what uh, what is what, they, what you've been saying is is just really stressing the same messages that drama Korea has been trying to put out there um, so yeah drama Korea was launched about four years ago we started with very handful uh, of dealer groups um, supporting us and now we have over 1,000 different dealership sites on our website the way it works we we try to find potential candidates on social media send them to our websites where you can do a postcode search and see the dealerships that operate in your area uh, and then you can see the career opportunities available um, we again we started by sending about 200 people a month to our members career pages and then we had a peak in December 2019 where we were sending about 3,000 different candidates to our members pages um, with the pandemic things changed slightly because there were many jobs available so we had to reshape our strategy a little bit and we focused again on promoting the sector in the long term uh, but now lots of jobs available again lots of enthusiasts behind drama career um, we're really lucky because um, I personally come from a comms and, and PR background so I'm no expert in HR but through the NFTA we have access via the NFTA HR working group to the through to the expertise of um, colleagues like Nicola that can sort of set the direction of drama career from an HR point of view and at that point, we can focus on our marketing strategies to, uh, to really try and help promote the automotive sector as a great place to work. Oh, it's, a, it's a fantastic portal and clearly it had a huge success with the social media takeover as well, which is now an annual annual event and, and fantastic, you know, but, you know, we, we've seen how JCT reached out to, uh, you know, a school and, and, you know, got work experience people in who, who, can, who they can then turn into apprentices. How, how, how important is... Is it that, you know, education establishments at the first port of call are saying automotive, you know, that this, this is a great area to move into? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really good point, because um, although it's one of the main strengths of Drama Career, our, our digital community, if you want, um, we, to some extent, for the first couple of years, we lack that face to face interaction. You know, it's great for me to meet people. Um, in, in real life that can tell me about their, their inspiring stories. Um, and there is this lack of awareness as Drama Career we've partnered with other associations and I know a lot of our members do already a great job uh, with local schools. Um, in fact, um, what we try to, to complement is, is the recruitment strategy and there are areas our resources are limited so we have to focus on what we can do best which, which is working closely with members to try and promote the automotive sector in the long term. Um, and I think in terms of connecting with real people, we found also 
shows like a British Motor Show or other career fairs are extremely useful and use quite a, a rewarding moment really back in, I think, 2019 when we had people walking through the Motor Show doors and recognizing the drama career brand for the first time. Um, you know, we're only focused our efforts on social media and never really spoken to anyone. So to see young people walking through the doors and recognizing them and saying, oh, yeah, I was seeing you on my social media at the time. I was like, wow, yeah, so it's actually working what we're trying to do. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I think there is this. There, there, there is still lack of awareness. Uh, I think what Drama Career is trying to do is a is a long term uh, investment, really. Um, and it's great to have the support of our members that believe in what we do and believe in in supporting our efforts. Um, and it is important to schools and other settings. And there are, there are other uh, associations within the automotive industry that focus mostly on that. Um, it, it is really necessary to have that support to, to kind of take all uh, the lack of awareness at, the, at an earlier stage. In fact, the, some of the feedback we had from members was also about potentially uh, encouraging even younger people to, or, or rather informing younger people. Then we, we tend to work on social media. You can't really work with two young um, potential candidates who will be from 18 above. Uh, but they were saying how from a younger age, and your stories are just an example of that, uh, people should should just be informed and then, you know, let them make their choice. But often you don't get great candidates because they don't know they could get a career in automotive. And often that's the case speaking to families. At the Motor Show, we had some great families coming around and uh, telling us how their young children were passionate about cars already, but they didn't think they could have worked in automotive, you know, or had a career in marketing and PR. Or, and especially, again, I know it's not the case for all the groups in the UK, but we, some of our members have really exciting opportunities. Um, they really look after their employees, so um, they're top employers, not just in the automotive industry, but in the UK. You know, they can compete with the likes of, you know, Google, whatever. Um, and and <clears throat> I think that's that's one of the things I wanted to ask Nicola about. Certainly, you know, we've heard it from from Sophie as well. You know, that there is there's uh, there is in many respects still a cultural. Uh, issue around automotive, yeah. uh, a legacy mm. uh, issue in a lot of cases. But the real, you know, the steps to look after people in the industry, mm. and and you know, you've already addressed that to a degree. But I, I was I was looking at a blog from Dale Wyatt at Suzuki uh, only this week, and he's done a a bit of a straw poll of industry leaders and found that people is their number one priority now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making work life better um and you know and and transforming the image of the of the industry really to attract more people and keep and retain more people yeah you know how how important is that cultural shift nicola which which i guess is is central to your role at jct isn't it absolutely yeah it's it's huge not only to my role as um head of colleague experience but also uh within customer experience it's central and the two really do meet in the middle um so we've been through a uh, a huge cultural shift uh, just at the back end of last year where uh, we've reanalyzed what our, what our relationship with the customer looks like, and that has um, uh, and what we've done is, is really cha is, is change everything about that sales experience uh, to the, the to the extent we don't even call our salespeople sales executives anymore. We now call them um, customer advisors. Um, because we really have reanalyzed what that re what that relationship between um, salesperson and uh, and customer looks like, and um, and that's um, translated um, to colleague experience too. You know, it's um, like I say that the, the two really do uh, distill into something that um, that is a is a massive cultural shift and and one thing we're, we're talking about a lot um, these days is how can we match uh, what we do for our customers that customer experience um, to what we're doing uh, for colleagues you know we we pour and historically have poured a lot of investment a lot of resource a lot of time into really understanding how to optimize the customer experience and and now we find ourselves doing the same thing for for colleagues Absolutely. who really are, are my customers <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah quite yeah. certainly your your focus yeah. and i mean it's important that people outside the sector see that as well isn't it gabrielli and and i guess in in drive uh, drive my careers uh 
you know, promotional activities, that the diversity is there, that the culture is there. That's what what you guys Absolutely. need to sell. Yeah, we, we've been trying to renormalize, if you want, the automotive industry, showing it as a sector like uh, any other um, that, that the person can, can work within. Um, and it's interesting because we also come across some, some clear small tweaks, if you want, to our campaigns that can really promote uh, diversity or attract a different audience. And to give an example, we do a lot of digital campaigns and we've noticed that um, in some cases, if you use an image of a flashy car, we may get more clicks and more views, uh, but we would be a 95% male to female split. I know that there's more to gender, but that's how Facebook and Google define them. Um, but if you use a more neutral image of an office or you know just people working in a dealership, you will get a 50-50% split and often that's what our members want to achieve. So we can now play with these different strategies and, and, and really promote um, a, a workforce that just reflect the customer base that, um, that usually interacts with our members. Um, and yeah, going back to the apprentice takeover that you mentioned before, that that's a campaign we we host every year now on occasion of the during the National Apprenticeship Week, um, and it was really about um, linking the automotive in apprenticeships within the automotive industry to awareness of the apprenticeships in general, which is what happens during the week. And so um, every week, uh, every year during that week, we reach over three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. Uh, young people through social media, thanks to the inspiring stories um, of apprentices working with the auto- within the automotive industry. Um, and that's really what's helping raise an awareness uh, of careers in automotive. Uh, we really enjoyed that campaign too. Yeah, it really well, gave you, us you a won. great... You were one of the winners. <laughs> it really gave us, that campaign really gave us the opportunity to um, to show diversity of our apprenticeships as well, You know, particularly in certain uh, roles that are more stereotypical male so yeah, we we found that a really great opportunity as well exactly. to engage with you, engage with uh, drive my career on that. Yeah, did you absolutely. did you guys engage with that? Do you have an input? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Next year, no. next, yeah. year. Yeah. next year, untapped resource here. They're going to be winning more awards in twenty twenty three. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, no, you're right. It was all about raising awareness of um, the, the different um, people we have employed, but also the different. Uh, apprenticeships available within the automotive industry because as I said before yeah the bulk of the jobs and vacancies are within sales uh, and mechanical roles uh, but you may not think you can apply for a marketing apprenticeship within automotive or actually one of the areas that were quite popular when we asked the questions of our target audience was um, IT and web development again I know it's not not, not uh, a sector where all dealerships will be able to offer uh, opportunities but as the requirement for uh, a different skill set um, is really facing dealers with the changing face of our industry. Um, this is again a great opportunity for dealers to attract talent that might not have thought they could have worked in IT or you know as web developers um, within the automotive industry. But actually, there will be opportunities of that kind, which is again exciting and showing that no matter what your interests and skills are, you you could find the career path for you within automotive. Absolutely, and I think as these two prove, when you find a job that you know, harnesses your careers, your interests, you've got a passion for, which thankfully JCT have have helped to to refine and, and take advantage of. You, it's not like going to work, is it? No, not really. <laughs> it's like my second home. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> work life balance. <laughs> <laughs> But lovely. Now it's been been a great great message to share today. I think, and and really good to have uh, have such a great group of people into the into the studio to chat about it. So, hopefully, you know, we'll get a few viewers, and it might just open a few more doors to a few more people in future. Thanks ever so much for joining me, all of you. It's been great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.